heaven is the throne of God. I mean, that's the place that God is where creation came from. Hallelujah. So I, I, I think we need to focus on the source of our blessings and the source of everything that we need. It comes from God. Amen. Hallelujah. Every good gift, every perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, if you go back into the Bible and the history uh, of mankind and uh, God created heavens and the earth and, and then it tells us that God created man. You know why He did? Because He wanted a family. God wanted a family. So He created man. He created Ab Adam in His own image and after His own likeness. And uh, then we know the history in the book of Genesis for uh, man fell. He fell from uh, the grace of God in the Garden of Eden. He had everything he could ever need, but he decided he wanted something else. So he disobeyed God. He fell. And God did not give up, thank God He didn't, uh, on man. Because God kept looking for uh, someone. He was looking for a people that He could bless. And it took a people that would obey Him. I mean, I can show you many, many scriptures in the Bible of where the obedient people are the blessed people. Amen? you got to be obedient. And God kept looking, kept looking for that kind of a person. Well, He found one in a man named Abraham, didn't He? Abram was his name at the time. And, and God said, Abraham, I'm going to change your name, and it's going to be Abraham. And I'm going to make a covenant with you. Amen. And in that covenant is going to be, I will make thee, I have already made thee, the father of many nations. Think about it. Told that to Abraham. Abraham was called out. God separated him out. Made the covenant with him. And it stands today. Isn't that wonderful? Here's what God wants. You know, last week we celebrated our country, our nation's independence, uh, Declaration of Independence Day. But God is looking for a righteous, He is looking for a holy nation. Amen? That's what He's looking for. Now, even the Apostle Peter wrote over there where he said, we are a holy nation. We are the called out. We are the separated. And we do show forth the praises of Him who called us out of darkness into His marvelous light. Amen? So God is looking, and that's what He's wanting to have, is a righteous, holy nation. And the reason He wants that kind of a people, because God is in the business of giving out His rights and His freedoms. Notice what I'm saying, His and not man-made. Alright? Giving out His rights. He wants to say, you have the right to do this, you have the freedom to do this because of your obedience. And that's what God wants to do. He wants to bless Everybody that will allow Him with all spiritual blessings. Amen. Let's be a part of that group, okay? Now, it happens in heaven. Go with me, if you would, to the book of Acts chapter 10. And I want to begin reading here in verse 38. The Apostle Peter had went to the house of Cornelius to what? Preach the gospel that they might be saved. Amen? What a wonderful story. I get blessed every time I read it. Hallelujah. And here's what it says here. When Peter preached a sermon to the Gentiles in the house of Cornelius, 
And he says in Acts 10.38 how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil for God was with Him. And then Peter is saying, we, that included him and others, Luke and everyone, we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and they hanged him. Oh my, that's injustice if I ever heard of it. But notice verse 40. Peter said, Him, that same Jesus, God raised up the third day, and then He shewed Him openly. Ah, didn't hide Him, did He? Not to all people, but unto witnesses chosen before of God, even to us. And Peter said, you know what? We even eat and drink with Him after He arose from the dead. Wow, that resurrection body is wonderful, isn't it? All right, verse 42. And says, and Jesus here commanded us, Peter says, to preach unto the people and to testify that which he, which, uh, that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of the quick and the dead. And then verse 43 says, to him gave all of the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. Wow, that's a powerful sermon and a message. And it is one that the world needs to hear today. All right, here's how we can look at it and how we can apply that to our lives today and to the world that needs Jesus Christ. Here's what happens. When we believe, and believing here includes trusting, when we believe and we trust in Jesus to, for us to be saved, let me tell you what happens. Our sins are remitted at that moment. Mm. Did you hear me? I said our sins are remitted at that moment. We are forgiven. And our sins are removed. How far, you say, Brother David, as far as the east is from the west, never, never to be remembered again. Hallelujah. That's the gospel. That's the good news right there. And you know what that is? Somebody says, how does that happen? Well, I don't know exactly everything that goes with... Uh, salvation in that regard, but let me tell you something, that is a legal act that takes place in a place called heaven. Amen? When you are forgiven and your sins are remitted or removed from you, that takes place in heaven. And it is God. It's not what you're doing down here on earth and you're turning over a new leaf and I'm going to walk right and do everything. There. No, no, no. This is something that happens in heaven that God's doing for us and we need to know about it. And in fact, it is God that wipes the slate clean. I like that old term, don't you? Wipes it clean. Amen. Every ugly thing that you ever did. Amen. God is wiping it right off the books. Amen. Hallelujah. In other words, the sin account. You ever knew and heard about the old account that was settled long ago? That was the sin account that we're talking about here. It just kept growing larger and larger all the time, right? And all of a sudden, hey, that account is settled long ago. Let me tell you something that God does that, you know, governments and people do not do. When God says, hey, this is settled, it is done with... He means He's not taking it and filing it away over here in some drawer and keeping record of it. In case you mess up, He's going to bring it back. No, that's not God. Mm -hmm. You know, 
People will do that. You know, I've, I've heard politicians a lot of times try to drag up dirt on their opponent just from way back. Of everything they may have done, man, they know more about it than other people. You know, let me tell you something. God is not in the business of doing that. He's not in the business of filing things away, but He does wash them away by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That's what He's in the business of doing. Amen? Now, in the book of Romans, I want us to go there just quickly here. Uh, in, in chapter 3 of the book of Romans, did you know the Bible tells us about uh, that we're, we're all guilty here, and we're guilty. In Romans chapter 3 and... Uh, Verse uh, 24, I believe it is. Amen. And um, it tells us here that uh, we, well, verse 23 actually says that we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's all of us. Then in verse 24, he said, we are freely justified, justified freely by His grace, for by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works should you boast. But we are saved and freely justified by His grace through what? The redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, this is something that happens in heaven. When a person receives Jesus Christ as their Savior, that person becomes justified. Justification. That's a big word, but it covers a lot of territory. That means it's like you had never sinned before in your life. Man, I like it when that happens. Hallelujah. It means your sins are forgiven and washed away. Keep in mind, whether you know it or anybody else knows it, that's what happens in heaven in your stead when you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. Now, let's go to another thing that happens in heaven here too. Go with me to the Gospel of St. Luke, if you will, in chapter 10. And uh, it, it tells us here, uh, Jesus talking, and, and the story is of where He sent out 70 of His disciples, and He gave those disciples power over all of the power of the enemy. And you know what it tells us there in, in Luke chapter 10 and down about verse 20 here. It says that uh, they came back, or verse 19, and uh, you know, they had power and they were rejoicing uh, because the demons and people, the devils were subject unto them. And Jesus said, notwithstanding in this rejoice not or not, that the spirits are subject unto you, but that uh, you can rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. I, I, I tell you what, I, I get feeling good all over more than anywhere else when I start thinking about there was a time that my name got written down in heaven. It may not have been written down. As far as I know, it was never written down on a, on a church book. It doesn't matter. Only thing that matters was it written down in heaven. Amen. That, that's where the, the, the real accounts are kept, amen, of eternal value. Keep that in mind, church. They are written in heaven. Now, let's go on that same thought to the book of Revelation, if you will. Revelation chapter 20. I want to spend just a little bit of time on this because it's very, very important. Uh, we think of things, well, you know, God has a set of books, right? Did you know he has two sets of books? That's right, he does. Now, I tell you what, there was a time I was, my name was on a set of books 
that, that was not a good set of books. Now, let me tell you. And that's what I was talking about, uh, about getting the, the account settled here. Now, in Re Revelation chapter 20 and verse 11, listen to this. John on the Isle of Patmos says, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat up on it, or on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And he said, I saw the dead, the small and the great, stand before God. And the books, plural, were open. <clears throat> and another book was open, which is the book of life. The dead were judged out of those things written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell were delivered up, and the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And he says in verse 14, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire, which is the second death. And verse 15, And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Now let me tell you something. Make sure your name is in the right book. Mm -hmm. And when you get out of the book of the second death, amen, and you can get into the book of, the, uh, of life, amen, then you are in the right book. Amen. One other scripture in Revelation chapter 21 and verse uh, 27, John said, And there shall in no wise enter into it, that's into the, uh, the new Jerusalem, the heaven. He said, Nothing will enter into it, anything that defileth, nor whatsoever worketh abomination, or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life has access. <laughs> To heaven. Hallelujah. Well, amen. That's legal. It's legal. I have a right. You have a right. And where is the name written that's going to get you into heaven? The book of life and God has it. Keep that in mind. Now, something else that happened when you got saved, when I got saved, you may have not known this. You probably heard it. But let's see what else might have happened here. And let's go to the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 10. Now, th this one does my heart good too. Amen? Matthew chapter 10. And let's look here. And verses 32 and 33, okay? Jesus said this, listen, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men. When you got saved, did you confess Jesus before men? I did. Amen? Uh-huh. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, Jesus says, Him I will confess also before my Father which is in heaven. Mm. Verse 33, But whosoever will deny me before men, him will also deny, deny before my Father which is in heaven. And let me tell you something. Uh, Luke recorded this same uh, scripture in, in Luke 12 and 8, and he used angels. <laughs> amen. He said, if you'll confess me before the Father, amen, and uh, if you'll confess me as Lord, then I will confess you before the Father and the angels. Amen. You know, I, I don't know how many angels there are. Now, I know the Bible gives like an uh, uh, innumerable uh, figure here, and there's thousands and tens of thousands, and some mathematicians have tried to figure it out, and they, oh, there's trillions of them. Just to think of it, church, when he got saved, that there was Jesus confessing your name before trillions of angels. Mmm, hallelujah. Whew. Man, 
I tell you what, that's pretty powerful stuff, right? Now, and you know what else? In Luke chapter 15 and verse 7, Jesus gave a parable of the lost sheep. You remember that parable? You know, he had a hundred, this man had a hundred sheep and, sheep and one of them went astray. And Jesus left the ninety and nine. That doesn't mean that he forsook them, by the way. But he left them and he went out to find that one lost sheep. And when he found it, guess what happened? There was rejoicing going on. <laughs> Amen. And in heaven, when a sinner comes, Jesus made it clear, when a sinner repents and comes to God, there are angels rejoicing in heaven in behalf of that person. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. Heaven's a busy place. It's an active place. Praise God. Amen. Let me tell you something. Well, why does God make such a big deal about this? I read a scripture over there in the book of Acts chapter 26 and verse 26. You know, the apostle Paul was talking to Festus, you know, and trying to, you know, he had visited with King Agrippa and different ones there. And, and they were, Paul was trying to convince them to believe on Jesus Christ. And uh, Paul made this statement in Acts 26, 26. He said, well, you know what? You probably know by now, and you've seen what Jesus of Nazareth hath done. And he said this, he said, you ought to know it because God doesn't do anything in a corner. <laughs> That's what the Bible says. He doesn't go off in a corner. He gets right out in front of everybody and puts it on full display. Whenever he said, let there be light, he wasn't hiding somewhere. He was right out there saying, light be. When God does something, He does it in full display. So, amen. Let the angels rejoice. A sinner has come home. Praise God. Amen. Now, here's another one. Now, in the book of Romans, I like the book of Romans. Amen. I like chapter 8 especially. Uh, and uh, let's see here what the Apostle Paul would have to say about something here that goes on in heaven. Romans chapter 8 and verse 14. <clears throat> this happens, church. It happens. He says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. What does it take to be a son of God? It takes whosoever shall believe on Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God. Hallelujah. Hmm. As many as are led by the Spirit of God are, present tense, right then, are, the sons of God. Verse 15, For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit, oh my, the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Glory be. Because the Spirit Himself beareth witness with our spirit that we are what? The children of God. And if we're children, then we are heirs. We are joint heirs with Christ. And if we will suffer with Him, then we will be glorified together. Let me tell you something. When a person comes and accepts Jesus Christ and is born again, I tell you what, they are papers that are served in heaven. And those papers say this, we are legally adopted into the family of God. Legally. I know there's processes we go through in adoption here on this earth and in our country and, and you have to get everything documented and everything. All right, God did the documenting. Let's go with it. <laughs> Hallelujah. You are in the family of God. You're born again. You're born into the family of God. Right? Amen? Now, I said at that moment... How long does it take to get adopted? 
At the moment the Spirit moves upon you and, and gives you the new birth, at that moment you are a child of God. You're a son of God. You're an heir of God. You're a joint heir with Jesus Christ. I said at that moment. At that moment. Now, we need to keep these things foremost in our hearts because it's so easy to get caught up, church, in, in a situation of where you're just going through life doing everything you know how to do just to be a good Christian. Hmm? <laughs> yeah, I, I do everything I know to do to be a good Christian. And then, you know, as one way of proving we're trying to do what's right, we'll join a church. Join a church. Amen? You know what I think works better? Instead of a sinner just joining a church, I believe it works better when a sinner gets saved and then joins a church. <laughs> and you know what? When a sinner gets saved, he's not just joining the church. He is the church. Hallelujah. Amen? He is a part of the body of Christ. He is a member in particular in the body of Christ. Christ. Amen? So where's all this get done? That we go from being a child of the devil to a son of God. Gets done in heaven, church. Mm. Okay. One other one that happens, and this is of utmost importance. The book of Romans again. We're close there. Let's go to chapter 5, if you will. And I want to begin reading in verse 8. <clears throat> what happens when I got saved? Amen. Well, it says here in Romans 5 and 8 that God commended His love toward us. In that while we were yet sinners... Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified. You are justified by your faith in the blood of Jesus Christ to cleanse you from all sin. Amen. Justified by His blood. You shall be saved from the wrath. The wrath is going to be poured out upon this world through Him. For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled. See, God loved us when we were His enemy. We were reconciled to God by the death of His Son. Much more being reconciled. That's the word I'm looking for here. Is reconciled. We shall be saved by His life. Hallelujah. What He did for us on Calvary. And not only so, we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom we have now received the atonement. I want to tell you something. When we come and accepted the Lord and got born again, our fellowship and our harmony with God has been restored. You were His enemy. Now you are His friend. Amen? It's been restored. Somebody said... What should I glory about in my life then? Let me tell you, the only thing I know that you can glory about is when you glory about the Lord and what He has done in your life. Take your freedom. Amen? Take your freedom right there, church, and glory in the Lord. Glory in that. One more scripture here. In the book of Colossians. 
Colossians chapter 1, and I want to read two verses of Scripture, verses 20, well, 20 through 22, okay? Now, here is the reconciling, and that does mean restoring, right? That means bringing you back into fellowship, right? Here is how the reconciling work of Christ took place. Colossians 1 and 20. And having made peace, you remember what it was like when, before you uh, uh, accepted the Lord, and hey, you, you, you didn't have the peace of God. You, you were in turmoil, right? Your heart was condemning you. Everything around you seemed like it was falling apart. But we have made peace through the blood of His cross by Him to reconcile all things to Himself. By Him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works. I mean, to the uttermost, guttermost people. God can raise them up. Listen to me. Even by your wicked works, He has reconciled them. In the body of His flesh, through death, to present you, what? Holy and unblameable and unreprovable to, uh, in His sight. Now, let me tell you something. The plan of redemption works.